Right, hallo jylle. Um, vandag gaan ons bykie kyk na die verskillende tekste wat jylle gaan moet kan skryf in jylle vraagstel 3 vir die eind van die jaar. Um, by elke een van die tekste wat jylle gaan moet doen, gaan ek vir jylle so oukie daar neergooi. Goed, so die eerste en waarna ons kyk is die vriendskapelike brief of die informele brief. Um, jylle sal sien langs die um, titel van die tekst gaan daar staan huistaal, eerste additionele taal en tweede additionele tale. So as daar net staan huistaal, hoef jylle dit nie te leer nie. If it only says huistaal, don't study it. If it says huistaal en eerste additionele taal, you study it. If it says huistaal, eerste en tweede additionele tale, like it says here, then you still study it. Ok, so, wat is een vriendskapelike brief? Jylle weet het in die tyd. Dit is een brief wat aan een kennis, familielid, vriend of geliefde geskryf word, om op een informele wijze te communikeer. Dit word ook geskryf om iemand in te of om vriendskappe te onderhou. So, a letter that is sent to um, acquaintances, family members, friends and loved ones, um, and it is usually to communicate in an informal manner. It is also written to someone to inform them of something or to keep a friendship going. Ok, goed, so een van die belangrijkste goed wat jylle op gaan moet focus is, eerstens, jylle moet kyk na jylle adres. Ok, baie belangrijk jylle adres. Um, ons sal later ook dier een paar ander opties gaan. We'll go through a few other options later. So hy begin met postbus en dan die nommer. Harry Smit is die dorp, hy is geen voorstad nie, so no suburb in this case. En dan die post uh, postkode 9880 en dan kom die datum daar. Die datum word altyd voluit geskryf. So as ons vandagse datum gaan bruik, sal ons skryf 23 april 2020. Dan begin ons met liewe pa en ma, asjeblief liewe nie lief de nie. Ok? Dan begin ons met een inleidingsin. Dis een nare, mistroostige dag hier by die koolshuis. So it's a horrible, depressing day here at hostel. Ek, and then you carry on. Nou, vriendskapelike briewe is persoonlik, openhartig en vriendelik. Ok? So it's a personal letter. It's open-hearted, meaning you are going to say exactly how you feel. You're not going to try and hide your feelings here. In it's vriendelijk, it's friendly, and it wordt altijd op een informele basis geskryf. Now, people, remember I say again, informeel does not mean it should be um, full of slang. Okay? Informeel means you are speaking to someone like you would speak to your friend or your parents. You're not going to address them therefore as u en meneer en mevrou. You're going to call them by their name, their nickname, or if it's sent to your mother and father, you will be addressing them as ma en pa. Okay? Die doel hiervan is om met a vriend of familie te communikeer. So the, the goal here is communication with family or friends. Die vriendskapelike brief bevat gewoonlik nies en verstewig verhoudings. So it usually has some form of information in there, news that they might not be aware of, en dit verstewig die verhoudings, meaning it strengthens relationships. So you are going to talk about things that they want to know about you. You're not just going to talk about yourself the whole time, you're going to talk about things that they would like to hear. Goed. Dit moet levendig en interessant wees. It has to be alive and interesting. Alive, not necessarily meaning the paper needs to stand up and start speaking to them. But you need to be upbeat in the letter. Even if it's depressing. Ne? Here she could have just said, this is a nare dag by die koolseis. But she says, this is a nare mistroostige dag hier by die koolseis. So the descriptions are over and above. When they read this, they need to be able to see you sitting there with your tear-stained pillow or whatever the case might be 
writing this letter. So it's not just going to be, oh, it was just another day. You need to explain to me in a lively manner, in an interesting manner, how things are going. Okay? Jy spreek die ontvanger direct aan. You're going to speak directly to the person. You're not going to say, ek wil vir my ma sê. You're going to say, ek wil vir ma sê dat ek ma baie mis. Of ma, ek mis jylle verskrikkelijk baie. Anything like that is okay. Vir my slordige taal en slangwoorde. Slordige taal, guys, en sling of slangwoorde. All of those things are those words like instead of saying ek werk, you're going to say ek span. Okay? That does not work in Afrikaans. So please make sure that you write in proper Afrikaans, which means vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary. If your vocab still needs work, get some help, please. Okay? Die toon en register moet pas by die verhouding tussen die briefskryver en die ontvanger van die brief. Good. What this means is, if you are writing to a friend, the way in which you will be speaking to your friend and the way in which you will be speaking to a parent or a grandparent, for example, will be different. Yes, both of them will be informal, but the one will be a little bit more down to earth, shall I say, because with your friends, you can be yourself. If you want to say, Oh, I saw a girl at the beach and whatever the case might be, that's fine. But you're not necessarily going to write about that to your mother or your grandmother. Okay? So, depending on who you are writing to, your content or the tone and the register of your content rather would then be a little bit different. Okay? The court inleidingsparagraaf, do you see that? A court inleidingsparagraaf. Moet, skak, moet die skakel wees tussen jou en die ontvanger van die brief. Now guys, your introductory paragraph cannot be my lieve vriend, ek skryf vir jou hierdie brief om dat bleh, kill me now. Okay? No. Your introductory sentence or introductory paragraph will be something like this. Dis een nare mistroostige dag hier by die koolshuis. Ek verlang so baie na jylle. And then, in second paragraph, you can start explaining to the parents why you are missing them all of a sudden. Okay? So, not going to tell them you're writing a letter because guess what? They know you're writing a letter. Good. The slot paragraph moet die brief saamvat. So, the, the, the conclusion at the end of your se uh, letter needs to take your letter together. Remember? This is a letter, it's not an essay. There has to be a definite conclusion here. Okay? Jy kan dalk a rede gee, hoekom die persoon vir jou moet terugskryf, so you can maybe give them a reason to write back to you. Skryf miskien vir ma en pa, ek mis julle so verskrikkelijk baie, dit sal so lekker wees om weer bykie van julle te hoor, hoe gaan dinge by julle, and then obviously they will have to write back to you. So dit was nou lekker om so met, met julle te gesel, so you can end off with something like that. It was so nice to chat to you. And then, you end off with liefde groete, mooi wense, of sterkte, depending on the content. Okay? Liefde groete, again, you're writing to your mother and your father, so you are sending them love, so therefore, liefde groete is perfect. Moi Vensa is also fine, but I would leave Moi Vensa rather for a friend or an acquaintance rather than for your loved ones. Starkte is something that you would write to someone if, for example, you wrote to them, uh, let's say um, your parents informed you that your grandmother passed away. Then you would maybe write a letter to someone else in your family. Um, who really loves your grandmother or a friend of the family who really loves your grandmother and you would end off then with starkte. I wish you the best. That's basically what it means. Okay? And then end off with only your name. You do not need to have your surname here because the people know you. No signatures required. Okay? And here is a bar of Venka. 
Okay, so the tips and the tricks here. It says, schrijf in a beskrywende en eenvoudige taal. So a descriptive but simple language. Okay, again for a specific doel. So if you are writing to your grandmother and your grandmother is maybe um, deaf, you're not necessarily going to talk about things that you can hear because it's not necessary. All right. Schrijfstukke moet een inleiding, een lichaam en een slot he. So there has to be an introduction, a body and a conclusion. And the only way that we know the difference between introduction, body and conclusion is if you leave lines open. Remember guys, I spoke about this a thousand times before. Jy kan nie in graad 12 a brief of a opstel skryf wat een paragraaf is nie. When you are done with your introduction, leave a line open. Then you start with your content. Your content, your lichaam, moet tenminstens twee tot drie paragrafen wees. Your content has to be at least two to three paragraphs and then your conclusion at the end again. Alright, so please keep that in mind. Die formaat moet correct wees. Daar moet een adres, datum, aanhef, paragrafe en een afsluiting wees. So those things must be there for you to get at least a pass mark. Ok? Die adres van die skryver kom rechts boe aan in blokvorm. Again, everything needs to be on, in one line there. Blokvorm means it shouldn't be all over the place. It should be neat underneath each other. Geen leestekens in die adres nie. Okay? No punctuation. As well here, do you see? There are no punctuation marks there. No comma, no um, full stop, nothing. Alright? Good. Daar word nie reels tussen die postcode en die datum oopgelaat nie. So no lines left open between the date and the postal code. Do not mess that up. The datum word full out geskryf. I spoke about that already. Date needs to be written out in full. A real word is in elke paragraaf oopgelaat. Keep that in mind. Okay? Groete, liefde groete, liefde, and so on and so forth. There are many other examples as well. Is the last paragraaf van die brief en daarom is daar a punt on the end. So at the end of this, liefde groete, mooi wense, there can be a full stop, that is perfect. Dan, die omskrywings, jylle verlangende dochter of jou vriend is optioneel. So after this, liefde groete, wara wara, you can write something, jylle verlangende dochter of jou vriend, and then end off with your name. But that is optional. You do not have to have that in. Okay. Now, um, I spoke to you about addresses, so address soorte, there are many different address types that you can use. So if you want to, for example, use a street address, then it will be something like Kerkstraat 1, always remember the number after the name, dan die uitbreiding, in other words, the suburb that you are at, then the plek naam, which is the town or the city, and then the postcode, and then obviously the date underneath. Postbus is acceptable. With a postbus, you're not going to have a suburb name at all. You can have a house name as well instead of a street name. So, a huis 342, the name of the place where the house is, and the postal code. If it is a small holdings, like a plot, for example, then you can say plot nummer soveel, die plek naam, any postcode, for example, you can say plot 558 Dalmada and then postcode 0700 or what ook al die geval mag wees. If it is a farm, then you will say Risthof, the town closest to it, obviously the town in which municipal area you fall, and then postcode at the end. Okay? You can have a Sevende Laan if you really want to. So Sevende Laan but it can be written in two ways. Sevende laan is one word of sevende laan as 
two words okay either one is acceptable but make sure if you put it in two words then the lawn must be capitalized all right done let op die volgende make sure of the following kerkstraat is altyd een woord omdat dit een samenstelling is tussen twee soortname. So kerkstraat is always one word because it is a compound word between two um, nouns. Okay? Kerk, church, straat, street. So kerkstraat, one word. Arcadia straat is een samenstelling van een eienaam en een soortnaam. So Arcadia street is a, a compound word again. But in this case, it is a ayanam, a proper noun, Arcadia, and a suertnam, a noun. So because of that, it gets put together as one word. Okay? Darum is dit ook reg om te skryf. Because of that, because it's a proper noun and a normal noun or an a, 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 a regular noun, we can also write it as Arcadia Strat, one word, Arcadia Strat two words where Strat has a capital letter of Arcadia Strat with a hyphen of Arcadia Strat with a capital S. Now, most of the cases, <coughs> apologies, most of the cases it would be easiest if you just write it as one word, okay? Like we have here, Arcadia Strat or Kerk Strat. But if you're going to use a name, let's say for example, Duplessis Strat or Duplessis Railon or whatever the case might be, then Duplessis will be spelt as normal. Capital D, small letter U, space Plessis, P L E S S I S. Okay? Then Strat of Railon will be a separate. So when it's a surname, it is usually written as two separate words. Try not to confuse yourself, try and use a name. Like Kerkstraat of Bokstraat of whatever the case might be that is simple and without confusion. Okay. Volgende gaan ons kijk na die formele brief in die volgende video. So formal letter in the next video.